crying every single day and night. The police sergeant is gonna pretty much yell at you. You're not even gonna know what he's saying. You know. Would you recommend foreigners to join the army? Yes and no. Hold on, let me tell him about it now so he doesn't grow up. He's a very important man, guys. He has to be places at a certain time. Insert video with the freaking general. We are only humans, and we will eventually finish by craving physical interactions. Some advice I can give you is, uh, like I tell each of our soldiers when I brief them. Um, uh, Major General Menace, no Prime Menace. It's, uh, it's important that you say that. Yeah. This dude right here. What's up, guys? Aaron BTV here, back at you with another video. And in today's video, we are going to be talking to my dear friend. Honestly, I freaking seen this guy's videos when I was in AIT, and we just end up at the same unit. But without further ado, Bernie PK, aka as Paluki. Today's video is going to be about being a foreigner and joining the United States Army, or basically joining the United States military in general. We're just going to basically going to talk about it. How, what's the process of joining the military? What it's like being a foreigner in the military? How you're treated? What the differences are? And yeah, so let's just chop it up real quick. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is uh, Sam Tu Paluki. Last name Paluki. Uh, Paluki. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Originally from Togo, West Africa. Uh, in the States, I'm from the Bronx. Uh, I moved in in 2017. Joined the army in 2017 and. Uh, yeah, yes, I was 18 years old when I left uh, Togo. I came over here, stayed for six months, and then I joined when I was turning 19. Mm -hmm. So, yes, if you don't mind, I should be 23 now. Wow. Yeah. And then why did you join the army? So, um, I would say uh, moving to the United States was the beginning of my life, like in general. Before before moving to the United States, I was, I was like a now. Every single time I go to school, come back, I just stay home, play video games, and just learn, you know. I didn't know anything about life at all. I was super scared of taking decisions for myself, and my parents were always taking care of me. So, I never had a job before, and uh, I just wanted to try something else. So when I came to the United States, so I was always scared of just going out and just trying something new, right? So my parents, my, my dad and my sister were taking care of me. They were giving me money every single week to uh, you know survive and things like that. And I was not comfortable with that, you know, I didn't like it. So six months after I was about to actually go to school, uh, Bronx Community College, I was about to do nursing and everything was set up, you know. And that day, the, the very last day I actually finished my, my, my sign up and all those other stuff, a recruiter just came to me and just hey, talked to me about the army. And coming from Togo, when we talk about army, it's like, it's very bad, like, super, super bad. It's like, you, you live a very, as a civilian, you are, you are pretty comfortable. As a soldier in Togo, it's something else, it's completely different, you yeah, know, super like bad. beat or something? Well, they're not considered. The, the way we uh, think about soldiers, it's pretty good, like, we, we think they are heroes. In Togo. America? Oh, in Togo? No, no, in, in America. But in Togo? In Togo, you are like a shitbag or something. Really? Yeah, they don't even care about police officers, so, you know. Wow. It's like not good at all. So, for me, joining the military was like, hey, you're just gonna be a shitbag, you're not gonna be a good thing. But I wanted to do it because I wanted to change who I was. Mm -hmm. and be able to talk and be courageous enough and make my own decision, and then I joined mm -hmm. the building. That's the what was the process of joining the army from a different country? When I came in, because my dad applied for me, it just took me uh, a week to have my green card. Mm -hmm. And pretty much when you have your green card, that's it, you can just join. So it was super easy for me. So your parents were already uh, citizens? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys are watching this and you're from a different country, you have to get a green card or become a permanent citizen somehow. And then that's how you can join the military. Let's talk about basic training and then we're going to talk about like, the army. So basic training, your English, you know, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the best as you said before. So in basic training, how were you treated as a foreigner? Like basically, how was basic training? How was going through basic training as a foreigner? It was tough. Mm -hmm. well, it, was, it was crazy. For most of the Africans that, I mean, that come from the French speaking country, but some, there are some that come from English speaking countries and they do pretty good, but for those people that never spoke English and they came over here, it was it was it was very very rough. Like the drill sergeant is gonna pretty much yell at you. You're not even gonna know what he's saying. You know. <laughs> so we were getting smoked every single time. It was super tough, right? Um, yeah, I was able to uh, meet some people that you know were embracing the fact that I was different. You know, they were even if they didn't understand what I was saying, they were 
friendly to explain exactly what's going on with the drill sergeant wants because they don't first of all they don't want to get smoked mm -hmm. because when the drill sergeant gives the command and you do not understand it when pretty much he asks you to do something and you don't do it as a group when someone messes up mess up everybody's going to yeah. smoke you know right so they were pretty much making sure i was crawled away and then yeah but it was very very tough basic training was super tough like i've never done something like that first of all i was in there and then i cannot speak english <laughs> right it was too Tough thing, so mm -hmm. it was a disaster. As far as like discrimination goes or mm -hmm. mistreatment because you're a foreigner, did you uh, receive any of that or no? Um, I would say probably yes, but I could not, <laughs> I could not interpret it. I, I didn't know it was that, you know, because mm -hmm. first of all, you cannot understand what they're talking about. But two years after that, when I started thinking about it, it was. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably fight someone. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, it, it is always there, like, even if it's not as in the military, it's not as. I mean, it's not there. You cannot see it like that, but it's there. It's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would say basic training is hard, but for you it was much harder. Just because I didn't understand the language, it yeah. wasn't physically. It wasn't too bad. It was like. Mentally, it was a little bit tough because I was changing. I came from a country where we didn't actually, I mean, I never had a job. So it was like, I'm coming straight from school and then, you know, I'm just doing something completely new. Mm -hmm. So mentally, it was a little bit tough, uh, but that was it. It wasn't too tough for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, how, so basic training at you graduate, and now we're in the, like the real army. Mm -hmm. How are you treated as a foreigner who's like somebody who's obviously not from America? Do you feel as though you're treated different, look as, you know, as a different, or do you feel as though you're treated as like everybody else? Uh, I would say I was treated different, but it makes sense completely. You know, uh, when you came to a unit, when you come to a unit and they pretty much give you guidance and you don't understand what it is, it's tough for the leadership to give you the, you know, the opportunity to be able to grow because you cannot do what they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So it took a little bit of time for me to add that. I was, I was very good at PT and I was physically good and everything, so that helped me grow. But you know, as far as understanding what was going on and adapting to the life of, first of all, adapting to the life of an American person, you know, <laughs> yeah. that was very tough. And then now being in the military, which is another thing, it was super tough for me. So I just. I need a little bit, a little bit of time to uh, adapt and understand things. It took me actually three years to understand these things. So, yeah. Like when you say three years to understand those things, I'm assuming just like basic American like customs and courtesies. There you go. Like slang, like what we do versus what you do in Togo. And uh, also the way you do things. Like in Africa, for example, you cannot, you not, you don't have the freedom to. I mean, you are free because there's not much going on, but you don't really have the freedom to just say what you think. You know. There are, um, basically when someone is older, you don't have the right to uh, over talk that person. Mm -hmm. In Africa, you have to respect that person. But over here, it's the person that has the most power that pretty much, basically the person in charge of you is the person giving you orders. Mm -hmm. And African people, especially the people that are older, have difficulties understanding that, you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was very tough for me to adapt. Even if I was younger, it was tough for me to just, uh, you know, how can I say this? Uh, it was tough for me to just uh, understand how the, the things are working over here, you know? Mm -hmm. It took me a little bit of time to just adapt and understand that, hey, this is the, the way American people live, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took a lot of time, three years, but I mean, people didn't see that, but it was tough. Crying every single day, right? Crying every single day? Actually, wow. it, was, it was kind of depressing, though. It was depressing, <laughs> but nobody knew that. So. Damn. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't crying because I was uh, treated, I was not treated fairly. I was just crying because, you know, you uh, leave a country, you leave your family. First of all, you left the country, you only spent six months in the state, and now you join the military and they put you somewhere where there's nobody you can hang out with. Yeah, for sure. I didn't have people just like me, like I think a lot of people who are uh, with whom I can hang out with. Mm -hmm. There was no soccer team. So I was just lonely, you know, it was very, very tough. Yeah. Well, I'm. That's why you know God, you know, put us together to make some dope ass content. Hey, yeah. What would you say? You know, tips coming from a foreign soldier who's already done the whole process of you know coming from a different country, yeah. being new to all this stuff. What's what are some tips you could give to a new foreigner joining the military? 
What's some advice you could give me? I would say first, before you actually join the military, make sure you do some research. Don't do this. Don't make the same mistake I made, right? I just joined and you know, yeah, I don't. I'm down. Yeah, do some research. Talk to people and uh, ask about the military, how it is, and make sure it is something you want to do before you join, right? Uh, talk to recruiters and get, get informed. That's the first thing. Uh, second, when you uh, when you go from basic training, you pass the mental and the physical, the path, you finish AIT, you come to your first base. Make sure you connect with people. Like it's super important to connect with people. If you stay by if you stay by yourself, it's gonna be very tough, right? You need information, so you need to connect with people that were already there. You get what you need from them, and now you start building your career. And uh, from there, you know, uh, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna say like be friends with, with your leadership because your leadership, they pretty much they are your leaders. You're not supposed to be friends with them, but like. Spend time with them and just understand exactly what they want from you and then do what is supposed to be done. Like if your leadership trusts you, they're going to easily promote you, right? So make sure you gain the trust of your leadership. And then uh, when you make money, especially if it is the first time you make money, just like me, right? Think about investing. It's important to, to use your money wisely. Don't just spend it and say, especially those soldiers that just want to meet that way and just buy the high cost cars. Uh, Muscle cars. Yeah, but there's a specific car. Uh, Mustang, Camaro. There you go, a Camaro. Because they, they make you believe that when you join the military, you have too much money, right? I didn't yeah. realize that was a thing. Like, it was actually, it is actually a thing right now. Actually. <laughs> yeah, like use your money wisely. Mm-hmm. Invest it or save it. One of those two. Don't just try to copy a lifestyle and then three years from, from there when you're getting closer to your first to your first contract to be done, you feel like, hey, uh, I didn't save my money, so I need to uh, stay longer or things like that. Like prepare your life, and then you know exactly what you're gonna do when you are when you get closer to to your contract to be done. Things like that. Would you recommend foreigners to join the army? Yes and no. Um, yes, because uh, first of all, most of the foreigners when they come they come over here, some of them have the diploma to be able to work in to have big jobs, but it's not easy for an immigrant, especially African, to have a job. Mm-hmm. In the United States, so um, yeah, I would I would suggest you join the military instead of just doing working at McDonald's, just doing uh, how you call this? It's like factory um, mi- minimum wage jobs. There or... you go, factory jobs or things like that. Like you can join the military, especially if you have your paperwork. Don't waste time. Okay, join the military. Use the benefits. You get your citizenship. Something I didn't know about, but yeah, you get your citizen citizenship, and then you can do other stuff. Right? It's important. I would say don't join the military if you have other plans, like other big plans going on, you have something already set up, then yeah, focus on that, make it grow. Or if you can just do both at the same time, then yeah, join. But yeah, just just do your research and then know exactly what you want to do. That's that's pretty much it. Lastly, I on my Instagram, I asked you guys what were your questions for a foreigner in the United States. 799658 says, have you ever been mistreated because of your ethnicity? Please elaborate if so. Seven nine nine six five eight. Uh, probably, yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure it happened. Uh, I really don't pay too much attention to it because, hey, I'm here to. I have a goal. I want to reach, and I'm here for the goal, right? If it doesn't happen a certain way, I'm gonna find another way to do it. So, uh, yeah, definitely it happened. But you know, I don't really pay too much attention. Just find a way to. Uh, your the most important in life is just to go towards your goal every single day. If you can do that, don't worry about all this other stuff that are happening, right? It's gonna always happen, it's, it's life, so, yeah. Justin Moreno asks, what's your country view of the United States military? So what's Togo's view of the United States military? Oh, uh, we actually think that, uh, well, for me personally, I thought the United States military meant special forces, so basically you are fighting every single day, but uh, actually, surprisingly, people from Togo, because we're just speaking about Togo, people from Togo actually value the United States military. They think they are heroes. They always see them on the news, and especially the movies that we watch, the war movies that we watch are US military stuff. So, you know, mm-hmm. we think they are pretty cool. Money Man 98 says, what was your score on Advil? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was 50 something. Okay, it's not too good. Without understand, understanding English. Hey. You know, that was pretty. Cool. You got a 50 in hard mode. Hey. Shiloh242 says, Did you have to do a background check? If so, how long did it take? 
uh, actually the background check to join the, the army, specifically the army for me was, uh, I needed two people, to, uh, our citizen in the United States to mm -hmm. testify that they knew me. Mm -hmm. They knew my dad and they knew something about me. So that's all they did, they wrote the letter and I showed it to my recruiter and that was it. And Paul Sinari says, how can I get I-551 to enlist in the army? You know what that is? What is I-551? Okay. Let's do a research quick where you can see if we can answer that. Oh. Uh, depending on how you come to the United States, uh, if, uh, if the person that invites you, especially, for me, it was my father, uh, my bi biological father, so you see that one. So it was super easy because, yeah, he's my father. So he just took me one week. If you come here as a student, it might take you five years. Probably most it, most of the time it's five years, right? You have to spend five years in in the state to be able to have your, your, your no, no, that's the citizenship, not that. I mean, get married, get married. That's that's one that I know, right? Yeah, get, getting married is gonna accelerate your stuff. You're gonna have your citizenship, but the green card though, it, it probably gonna take one month or six months. One of those two. I really don't know about the green card, but I know about the citizenship for sure. It's five years, so. But this video is 30 minutes freaking long, and do you have anything else to say? Um, thank you for having me on your... Thank you for coming! On like the this... most, actually, on the most watched YouTube channel in Fall Home right now. So, ah, you know, I wouldn't say you know, all that. You know, you know, I couldn't, so very... I couldn't do, I couldn't have done it with, bro, on some real stuff. Bernie VK, I don't, you want me to say your real name? Sure, bro. Paluki, like, for real, like, it's just, it's good knowing to content it's good knowing somebody else who creates content so they kind of understand like the whole struggles that you go through and then like we made videos together we freaking talked about ideas of it about videos together so yeah. like this man like i'm telling this i'm like i'm so blessed to have him in my life and like um like for real for real bro like i really do appreciate you man like you really definitely yeah. made my life like for the better bro like sure. If I didn't have this dude, I probably wouldn't have passed aerosol, bro. You remember that? I didn't run a room. I didn't want I was being a hard I was being hard headed <laughs> on the freaking yeah, thing. Bro. It said bring your beret, but it said like officer or whatever. He said bring your beret. I'm like, bro, it says for our officers. But I brought it because of him. And yeah, if I didn't bring it, I wouldn't have passed aerosol because it's strict like that. But yeah, this dude. I didn't do anything. He bought the beret, but I was not there to take the, the whole cost with him, so. And see, look at him. He's so humble. He doesn't want to take the credit and all that other stuff. But yeah, check out his channel. This dude's done some great stuff. This man looked like his story is crazy. He went from, came from Togo. He freaking creates content that gets millions of views. And like, I don't know, bro. You've definitely accomplished a lot of stuff in your life. I would say I didn't actually do anything yet. Uh, it was just an experience, you know. The four, the four years I spent, actually, you know, because I started creating content. A year after, the three years I spent in, I mean, the three years I'm spending in the army right now, uh, were just an experiment to understand how social media works and, you know, things like that. I was lucky enough to have people like you to watch my stuff. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but I don't think this is the end. I think it's going to be a lot more coming. So, yeah, just wait a few years. We'll see. Burning PK, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe if you want to. I really don't care. Um, like the video, bro. Like the video, man. It really helps the channel out. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching once again. And peace out.